we shall be doing something a little bit different today. Uh, no guitar in front of me for a change. Uh, today is going to be more of a discussion and uh, well, kind of not like philosophy, but you know, um, more of like a, a thought provoking video uh, where we're going to talk about practicing. So the dreaded P word. This has been a topic that's arised quite a lot recently uh, during discussion over on the Guitar School Discord server, uh, or more specifically, how one should structure their practice sessions. Uh, it's by far one of the most common questions that I get from you guys, especially newer members of the school who are sort of like still getting into the swing of things. Regardless of whether someone is a newer player or an older player, a lot of people struggle with uh, structuring practice routines because of course like everyone's different and learns in different ways uh, at different paces. And, and some people require a bit more, not hand holding, but a bit more, uh, you know, direction, which is totally understandable. I'm definitely the same way. Um, when I join a, a new program or something, um, I definitely like to be set on the right path and have that peace of mind that I'm doing things correctly. Because, you know, there's always that sort of like um, niggling thought in the back of your mind that maybe you're doing something wrong. And that's most of the reason why I came up with the Guitar School Roadmap. Uh, so people have like a definitive guide for their time here at the Guitar School. And is also the reason why I'm now doing this personal practice roadmap for you guys uh, to give you a bit of direction in that sense as well. Uh, so after today, with both the, uh, the regular Guitar School Roadmap and the personal practice roadmap, you should have all of the tools at your disposal for setting yourself up for guitar success. So I'm going to divide this video up into two parts. Uh, the first part, we're going to talk about a practice, do a bit of a, a deep dive on uh, best practices for practicing and uh, types of practice and how you should balance it, like how often, how much you should practice, you know, answer all those sort of like burning questions that many of you uh, often have. And in the second part of the video, I'm going to be showing you this personal practice roadmap that I've come up with and just walking you through it quickly and how you should use it uh, to get the best results out of it. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. First off, the number one burning question that uh, is on many people's minds when they start playing guitar, uh, how often should you practice? Great question. Obviously, the answer to this question is incredibly variable, like how long is a piece of string, as they say. Um, but as a rule of thumb, um, if you're serious about guitar, I want to see a progression at a reasonable rate, at a reasonable rate, I would say one hour a day is absolutely ample um, for you to achieve your goals, like 100%. You often hear um, stories and in, like, interviews of all the great guitar idols and the guitar gods um, telling people how they just like woodshedded guitar for like 12, 13, 14 hours a day, every day. Of course, like uh, there are some people that do this, uh, but this is absolutely not required. You do not need to be putting freak amounts of time into playing guitar to get good. Uh, so do not feel guilty that you're not putting in like hours and hours and hours. It's not necessary. Uh, it's a lot more important that your practice time is um, spent well rather than uh, just goes on for hours, right? And to be honest, somebody who has a, um, you know, constructive, structured practice routine uh, that only practices an hour a day is going to improve a lot more than somebody who plays like 10 hours a day uh, but just like noodles all day and doesn't really like do anything constructive. So it's all about the quality of the practice, not the quantity. But that being said, um, if you're young or like don't have many responsibilities and you have a lot of time to spare and you're especially enthusiastic and driven uh, to get good at guitar, then by all means, uh, put as much time in as you want. But obviously, uh, the vast majority of people that, um, that join the school and, you know, that I know, and even myself included, uh, we have limited amounts of time and our spare time is very valuable. So we want to make sure that we're making the most of this practice time and uh, not just, you know, pissing it away. So yeah, one hour a day is absolutely ample and it's probably the sort of core amount of time of practice uh, daily, if you can, that you should be aiming for. And honestly, I think in 99% of cases, people are lying if they say they don't have one hour a day that they can spend um, on guitar or like with another hobby. You know, I would say it's very, very rare that someone is so, so strapped for time that they don't have even just one hour to spare for this sort of stuff. Because like I mentioned in my first practice video I did uh, last year, 
A lot of practice happens actually when you're not at your instrument. Uh, providing you're doing everything you should be in your practice lessons, a lot of progress uh, does actually come when you're resting, like when you're sleeping. Yeah, you know, all of the uh, the muscle memory in your brain or like the wiring is formed while you're resting, uh, while you're not even playing guitar. So you know that's a fucking easy win, and it's really a clever move to try and harness that to speed up your progress. Because like instead of bashing your head against the wall trying to play something over and over again for hours that you just can't get right. You know, know when to stop, uh, practice for an hour, put your instrument down, come back tomorrow, and you'll find that magically, uh, you know, some of that wiring and muscle memory should have formed, and it should be a little bit easier than it was the day before. Being aware of that phenomenon, it, it just makes your practice so much more efficient and saves a lot of time. And also, uh, there's something called mental practice as well. Um, this is something that I've been doing for years, but I was never really like that conscious of uh, until a while back, is that, you know, when you have some downtime where you're not really doing anything else, like, uh, I don't know, sitting in a meeting at work or like on a train, just any sort of like situation where you find yourself just sort of like daydreaming or whatnot, I quite often find myself just running through like licks and solos and riffs of stuff in my head, uh, just sort of like uh, mentally playing. I can sort of like almost imagine uh, my fingers playing the stuff as I'm just sort of sitting there running through stuff in my head And even sometimes I just sort of like sit there and do the fingerings like on the table imagining I was playing And this actually is very powerful and goes a long way Especially when you're trying to learn something new like get the muscle memory ingrained It can actually speed up the process significantly um, when you're trying to get something fresh into your head So yeah, two important takeaways there uh, Don't underestimate the power of sleep and rest and uh, don't underestimate the power of mental practice when you have a bit of downtime away from your instrument. Right, so enough of the abstract stuff. Um, what about actual practice when you sit down with a physical guitar on your lap? So, uh, in my opinion, there are two types of practice, okay? Uh, there's what I call focused practice and casual practice. Focus practice, I guess, would be your, you know, traditional, like, woodshedy type of practice, where you sit down and have, like, a specific thing in mind that you want to really, like, oil and hone and uh, get under your fingers. You know, the metronome comes out, the backing tracks come out, like, whatever, like, some real hardcore, focused, constructive practice. Because I'm not going to beat around the bush and try and sugarcoat it, guys. Like, if you want to get better, you have to put the work in. And this uh, type of focus practice is where a lot of the uh, a lot of the heavy lifting occurs, and it's still very important. I can't stress that enough. But it's not all doom and gloom and, uh, you know, serious stuff like that. Uh, the other type of practice is what I call casual practice, or like, I don't know, fun practice. But I don't like to use the word fun because, you know, focus practice can be fun as well. But casual practice can include things like um, playing your favorite songs or solos, or like improvising over backing tracks, or doing some songwriting. Uh, just something that's a little bit sort of like, like, uh, I guess, less less taxing on the brain and is going to contribute less to, um, you know, your deterioration of, like, focus or making you, like, feel burned out or stressed. Just something chill uh, that's enjoyable to do, that you can just sort of, like, sit down, play, have some fun and not put too much mental effort into. So the key to a good practice session is balancing these two types of practice because, let's face it, uh, most of us do not have the mental fortitude or patience to sit down for like, you know, even just like an hour or like two hours um, and just do strict, focused, serious practice. You know, it's um, it's very difficult and it takes its toll. So I think it's very important to sort of like reward yourself and incentivize yourself with uh, some fun practice. So like, say, for every... X amount of time you spend doing some focused, constructive practice, then give yourself X amount of time to do some casual, more sort of like, you know, light-hearted practice as well. Just to keep it varied and, you know, to stop yourself getting, or like, bored or stressed or just, uh, you know, just a bit too, like, uptight. Because really, above all else, the number one goal when progressing on a guitar, or like any instrument or any discipline or, like, craft, uh, for that matter, is to be very conscious about not becoming burned out. And this is something I'm very conscious of, not only guitar, but also um, in content creation, like, you know, YouTubing and stuff, 
it's uh, it's so important that you preserve that motivation because once that motivation dries up your progress will dry up with it as well so you need to be very very conscious of keeping things fun and you know motivating for yourself so that you don't get fed up and then like slow down and stop practicing and thus stop progressing uh, but yeah I would recommend starting with the uh, two to one balance of focus first casual practice and see how you get on with that just use that as like your jumping off point point. and lastly warming up and I'm warming down. Uh, so do not neglect these. These are so, so important. I mean, I don't need to stress the importance of warming up. You know, that's that's obvious, right? Uh, a, uh, you're going to do yourself injuries if you start going like too hard and fast without warming up. You know, your hands are just going to fucking deteriorate prematurely. And I mean, even more obviously, you're just not going to play as good if you're not warmed up properly. So again, how long you spend warming up is going to depend on you as a person. But I think like 15 minutes is a good jumping off point. If you're unsure what to play when warming up, I did a video lesson not too long ago on a really cool warm up exercise that you can do. So go check that out. But generally for a warm up, you want to keep things pretty light, uh, not too intense, just just enough um, activity to get yourself sort of like, you know, in the zone and warming down. What exactly is warming down then? So uh, what I found throughout all of my years of playing is that when I'm doing this um, focused, constructive practice, the things that seem to uh, reinforce themselves the most uh, during like my rest periods are the things that I play towards the end. So what I tend to do is when my practice sessions are coming to an end and cooling off a bit, um, I revisit the thing that was like, I guess the main focus of my focus practice, the thing that was like giving me the most uh, trouble that I'm really trying to work hard to reinforce. And I'm just going to run that just like a few more times, maybe just for like five minutes, like not for too long. Just give it like a few more repetitions just to ensure that it's really in like the, you know, the forefront of your mind. Because I feel like those things that are the most uh, recent and most present in your mind after ending practice are going to be the things that are gonna be reinforced strongest during your brain rewiring, uh, muscle memory forming rest periods. Right, so that's all of the lofty stuff out of the way. So now let me walk you through the personal practice roadmap that I've constructed, especially for you guys to use. So essentially what this is, is just a rolling seven day a practice plan that you can use to informally structure your practice sessions. So to start with, right at the top here, we have weekly goals. This should be pretty self-explanatory. So at the start of every week, when you sit down, hopefully to uh, plan your practice for the week best you can, um, I think the first thing you should do is to think about what you want to achieve this week. It can be one goal, it can be two goals, it could be uh, three even. But I think the most important thing to keep in mind is to be uh, realistic with your goals, okay? Uh, of course, it's good to be ambitious. Uh, maybe that'll be good for some of you to, um, you know, to really strive to push yourself as hard as you can each week. But you also don't want to be consistently setting unrealistic goals, which, um, you know, which you're not going to make and then get disappointed over and then start getting disheartened and then like you start playing less and then, you know, your momentum slows up with your progress. So yeah, keep it nice and realistic. Uh, it could be something kind of big that you could work towards all week, like learning a particular solo or a solo. Or it could be three smaller things, like I want to learn uh, this scale, I want to learn uh, the these chords, and I want to uh, spend some time practicing this technique, you know, something like that. So yeah, start by filling out your weekly goals at the start of each week when you plan. Uh, keep them nice and realistic, and then we move on. Uh, so it's good to have these written down, just so they're sort of like there in your mind, um, and that you'll be thinking about them and looking at them every time you open up your practice roadmap. All right, and the other boxes are simply just uh, what you plan to do uh, in the upcoming seven days, practice-wise. And each one of these daily breakdowns uh, consists of a whole one-hour practice session, okay? Uh, you see it's broken down into time units. We have warm-up for 15 minutes, focus practice for 30 minutes, casual practice for 15 minutes, and then warm down for five minutes. So the bulk of the practice session adds up to an hour, and then we have this little uh, warm down for five minutes just tacked on on the end. Like discussed previously in the video, you can tweak these uh, units of time to better suit your, you know, your preferred length of practice session. Um, maybe you want to practice longer than an hour, maybe shorter, or maybe you want to like change the um, change up the divisions of time. Like I suggested earlier, like you could switch around the 
amount of time you spend doing casual practice and focus practice. Uh, so maybe just start with these recommendations and then adjust as necessary. Uh, but yeah, it's very straightforward. Uh, the basic idea is that you have the same uh, structured practice routine for the first five days. So, you know, like a, a Monday to Friday work week, day one, two, three, four, five are all structured the same. And then we have a little sort of like um, cool down, uh, I guess, weekend period for day six and seven, uh, where there's no focus practice. There's just warm up and some fun casual practice. That's it. Because like I said, it's important to maintain that uh, enthusiasm and motivation. So it's important to give yourself a bit of time off from the serious stuff as well. And there's really no uh, reason to feel guilty about skipping a couple days uh, because you'll find that the, uh, you know, the muscle memory is being formed you know, over these two days, over the weekend, uh, even when you're not consciously doing anything. So you'll find when you come back on a, a Monday, for example, after your two rest days, uh, that I almost guarantee you're going to be uh, noticeably better than you were on day five. I promise that. So yeah, maybe at the beginning of every week, just uh, sit down and uh, write write your rough guide for the week, what you think you're going to be working on, what you want to work on. Obviously, it's kind of hard to expect you to know exactly what you want to be practicing every single day of the week. So you can like fill it out at the start of every day as well, or maybe do like a couple, uh, like two or three days in advance and just sort of like uh, plan as you go. But I think it's very important to follow a structured plan like this because what it's going to do is hold you accountable. You know, you're going to have that niggling thought in the back of your head saying, oh shit, I haven't filled out my a personal practice roadmap for the week. And I guarantee that if you can maintain some consistency and stick to doing a uh, structured personal practice roadmap like this, you know, you're going to see vast improvements pretty quickly, okay? So there we have it, guys. A little deep dive on guitar practicing. I'd really love to see how you guys are using this and uh, whether you find it helpful or not or, like, what tweaks maybe you'd like to see for it. And as usual, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. So cheers, guys. Good luck. Happy shredding. Happy practicing. And I shall see you for next lesson.